All right, bro, some college football stuff. Now that, uh, look, bro, we're creeping up on my favorite time of year, silly season. Remember Caleb Williams, all this and that about I'm not going to declare. I want ownership in a franchise. There's about five teams I would consider going to this, that, and the third. Rose declared yesterday he's going to the league. I'm just saying, like, and I said it every time. Like, stop entertaining this nonsense. He's going to be the number one overall pick. He might go Eli Manning and say, I'm not going to the Bears, and so he goes number two overall. He's going to make so much money before he ever takes a snap. Dude was never coming back, ever. Like, it's, it's like, and I said it every time. Okay, when he declares, then come back, and then we can talk about it. Like, yeah, people that actually thought he might not come back was the dumbest. It was the dumbest thing I saw, saw all year. Honestly, it was a great PR spin, right? Because he would come out and say these things, like the timing of it was always right around when he had a suspect performance against the team. Always. <laughs> like, always. if that's not good go PR, play Notre Dame, I don't know look, what is. He went and played Notre Dame, looked awful, and all of a sudden rumors came out. He might come back. And you're like, what? I mean, yeah. one bad game. Come on. <laughs> no, you, you, well, you, know, you know what that does, right? As soon as you say someone might come back, guess what that fan base is not going to do when you play a bad game? criticize you because they're going to start no no we want him back hey they're listening to the fans hey oh they hear the fans caleb might come back mm -hmm. oh my gosh guys can you imagine how good we'll be next year if caleb comes back it's like you know they're not talking about how awful caleb was against notre dame <laughs> exactly and then it's also like listen he's he's clocking and paying attention to the fans if you guys say bad things about him he might go it's all a ploy and they executed it to perfection because there were times this year zach where Let's call let's call a spade a spade. He was not good. No, no, he had a, he had a couple games. Yeah, but, but I think good he's, player, great player, QB yeah. one or two on everybody's board. Yeah, he he's uber talented, and they're gonna fall in love with all the things he can do. So mm -hmm. the NFL does right when you're a top five pick. They worry about missing the 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 elite traits, right? Yeah. And saying if they if they evaluate the body of work and they really weigh heavily on the negatives, the bad games, all of a sudden they're like, I don't think he's it, and then the the he gets drafted third overall and he's the best quarterback in the league and everyone gets fired. So they fall in love at the top of the draft. They fall in love with positive traits. They fall in love with those, those elite traits and they, they just ignore the other ones. And they're like, ah, we'll coach that out of them. Look at this. It's just, it's every time they can't ever just evaluate it. Big picture. How much do you worry about Caleb Williams? The, like the mental makeup. Cause you know, all this buzzwords, not a leader ego, you know, a little bit emotional, doesn't take accountability. Like all those are buzzwords that have kind of been bubbling now for a little his bit. Fingernails. Yeah. Well, I wasn't like, gonna say. I was. I was gonna let you get that one off. But like those are the buzzwords, and it's gonna be like, how does he fit it in the locker room? He wasn't invited to his wide receiver's birthday party. Like we're gonna start to hear all of these things. <laughs> all the crazy takes. But just think about the five guys you just listed: Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, even C.J. Stroud now in the NFL. Mm -hmm. All five of them are tough, like square jaw, serious. Like none of them are painting their fucking fingernails pink. None of them are are doing all the charades. None of them came out in the in the draft process and said, "I won't go here." I'm a little yeah. spoiled bitch. And none, like, of, them none of them did their, that. None of them cried to their mom. Like, I, I, and I cried. I cried to my mom just not in front of eighty thousand people. You know, I'll do it in think, the house. But Chris, do you think CJ Stroud wanted to go to the fucking Texans? Do you no. think Bryce Young wanted to go to the Panthers? nobody wanted to go to the Panthers. Nobody wanted to go to the Texans, but they didn't say shit. They're like, Oh, you're going to pay me $30 million. All right, let's go. Like, let's see if we can build something here. CJ Stroud didn't complain. It's, it's a major, major red flag. Now I bet Bryce young in hindsight being 2020 is looking back. Like, damn, I should have said I wouldn't go to the Panthers. <laughs> like I really should have said no and been a petulant little baby. So I, I guess I'm just curious if you think that'll impact the draft stock because, like, the things – when they talk about Drake May, none of that's going to come up. It's going to talk about, like, he's basically a captain his freshman year, like this, yeah. then the third, the things with Michael Penix, like his like his toughness. I mean, he said free to guys after beating Texas, bro. He said free my boy back home, I forget about you. Like, that's not a toughness thing. Like, that's that's a real one. Maybe a little bit too real for the NFL, you know, the, way, <laughs> the way they like their quarterbacks. But um, I'm just curious if, if that'll impact him being QB1 or not. I, like I said, I, I should it. Yeah. Sh should they evaluate all that? Yeah. Will they? No, no, because they will fall in love with generational talent. The, the, the things, not generational, the elite qualities that he has, 
just like they've done time and time again with the Jamarcus Russells of the world. The you look at receivers, the the all yeah. the guys that went in front of Michael Thomas. Essentially, I, I forget all their names because they're not in the NFL anymore. The only one that matters is Corey Coleman. Yeah, because he went to the Browns. But it's they fall in love with like one quality, and they just think like, oh my god, he's gonna be so good. And it's like, dude, watch the whole game. Like, is he a great player? Like, is he a dominant player? Or does he just have one trait? You see it with 40 times in the NFL all the time. Oh, my God. Darius Hayward Bay ran 4-2. It's like, bitch, he stinks. But you drafted him in the first round because you fell in love with his 4-2-40. Like, John Ross. How'd it go? John Ross, another one. Combine record. First round. He stinks at football. Put him on a track, probably great. But they fall in love with elite qualities all or elite like characteristics all the time. The Bears are going to be in an interesting place because Justin Fields, ultimate team guy, everybody loves him in that locker room. The coaching staff loves him. Imagine if you're the coaching staff and you have just spent a couple years with, with Justin Fields and now you got to go interview Caleb Williams. And you're like pounding the table. Please do not draft him. Please, please do not draft him. You're not going to be listened to. So it's definitely an interesting case. NFL players are saying that that bear scheme is trash, but uh, but Justin Fields is a hell of a quarterback. Here we go. Quick other little note: the Raiders. I guess this now. This is what Jonathan Jones, the fucking NFL Network insider, basically reporting that the Raiders want to draft JJ McCarthy to try to sway Jim Harbaugh to go to the Raiders. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> That's got to be fake, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine that. The I mean, timeline but, doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I can't imagine they would take a quarterback to get a head coach, and I can't imagine he would take the job just because J.J. went there. Like, it's going to be deeper than that. I mean, it's – and I don't think Jim Harbaugh is so valuable as a head coach that you would reach for J.J. at 13 just to get Jim Harbaugh. It's like what a yeah. waste of a top fifteen pick, and I'm not saying, and I'm not, I don't mean that to mean JJ's going to be a bust and that's a waste, but like, if you don't take him at thirteen, where's he getting drafted? Probably twenty eight, mm -hmm. thirty. I mean, I haven't looked at the draft order, but he's going to be a late first round pick, and that's his ceiling. You reach in the middle of the first, what? Because Harbaugh's worth it? Man, get the fuck out of here. 